If you ride a Honda Goldwing, I'm pretty sure you already know who Max McAllister is and you probably are familiar with traction dynamics. He's best known for his suspension upgrades on the Honda Goldwing. Of course, they build suspension components for lots of different motorcycles. Or what you may not know, traction dynamics also has a bunch of little products. I call them goodies. And uh, I placed an order on their website the other day for a few of these things I've been meaning to order for quite some time. Time, and today, I'm going to show them to you. This video is sponsored by Cruiseman's Garage Honda Goldwing Maintenance Video Series. I should let you know right up front that Traction Dynamics is not sponsoring this video. They didn't pay me to make this. I ordered all of these items on the Traction website, and I'm going to explain each one of them to you, and then I'm going to install them, and we'll see how they work. Now, these are some little stickers that go on the horn button. I didn't know I was going to get four of them. Uh, we'll talk about that later. These are some replacement bolts for the Honda brake lines on the front fork, and I'll explain why we do that later. This is a replacement, uh, kind of a non-skid pad for the center stand. I already had one on my bike, but it's kind of wearing out. And this is a little pin that's used to hold the front fork steady, uh, especially when you have the bike up on, uh, on a lift and the front wheel is off the ground. I'll explain that also. And this is an extension for your positive battery terminal. I'll explain why that's necessary. There's another inexpensive item that Traction makes that I'm going to give honorable mention to. I've had this on my bike for quite some time, and that's this little dipstick extender. Makes it much easier to get your oil dipstick in and out, when, especially when the engine's hot. So the first product we're going to install today are the replacement brake line bolts that hold the brake lines onto the front fork. The problem you have with these bolts that hold these brake lines in on the side of the fork is a 5 millimeter Allen wrench will want to cam out. There's just not much meat on that bolt for some reason, and that's why Max... I engineered these replacements that have a much deeper um, socket, I guess, where the, your wrench can very easily fit in there and get a good bite, and these are stainless steel. I'm not sure what material these are made of, but I know um, these are actually new because they put these on after my accident, so these are new bolts. I know that I had uh, the previous ones were pretty messed up because I had had that problem with them camming out. So what I'm going to try to do this time, before I even start trying to loosen them, I'm going to tap on these a little bit. You don't want to go crazy because I don't want to... This is all aluminum cast here, so you don't want to run the risk of obviously doing any damage. And I'm going to see if I... Yep, that one broke loose. Good. Okay, so that's a good sign. I could never get the one on my my uh, from the factory, the bolts. I, I'm thinking possibly when they repaired this bike, they didn't torque them down as much. And I'm holding all of these brake lines back here to hold them in place uh, so I can get the new bolt in. And there is the factory, the OEM bolt. I'm going to take that out, and I'm going to put Max's in its place. So I started on the left side of the bike, and I struggled to get the threads to catch on the bolt, to catch on the uh, that brake line block. And I realized there's actually two different blocks. There's one on the outside or closer to you, and then there's one on the inside closer to the tire. And the threads are actually on that inside block. And mine just wasn't lined up perfectly, even though I tried to hold everything in place. And I thought I did a pretty good job. I actually didn't. So you can see here, I'm just spinning, spinning, spinning. But the threads are not catching. So I finally realized what I was going to have to do is I had to hold down that block in the back. And I got a flashlight and looked in there to see, you know, where the threads were. And sure enough, they were just not lined up properly. And I'm showing you this because if this happens to you, it's possible that that 
that inside block just isn't lined up perfectly and you may have to do what I did either press it down or press it up a little to get those threads to catch finally it did and this only happened on the left side of the bike okay one thing I learned when I was trying to screw this in it wasn't catching on the threads and the threads are on that back block there's two blocks here it goes through the first block and the threads uh, are on the very back block and what I had to do was press kind of down toward the ground to get those threads to catch and uh, now they they're in good so it took me two or three tries to figure that out so if you have a hard time getting those threads to catch uh, that's what you can do so I'm going to tighten this up just by hand now You'll also notice there's no visible thread lock on this bolt on here. We'll put the new one in. This one, it looks like it's going to line up a little easier. Yeah, that one went right in. I think they actually look nicer too because they're polished they're like a chrome plated stainless okay quick update i just went and looked in my service manual and i'll be darned i cannot find what the torque spec is for these bolts they're really just kind of to keep these brake lines in place i don't think it's not like they're holding on a brake caliper so i'm just going to give them a good firm tighten and uh, just by hand there's no need to go crazy I'm not sure if the threads back here on this brake line a block are aluminum or if they're steel I'm just not sure so I don't want to go too crazy with it but I just firmly tightened it and I'm going to do the same thing on the next uh, on the other side and so I know I mentioned earlier I'd try to find the torque specs and I never could find them so if you know, if you have that information, put it in the comments down below. Uh, I went back and watched Max's video. He doesn't mention the torque specs, so uh, I'm not too concerned about it. I know I've got them nice and firm. They're not going anywhere. Okay, so here is the battery on my Goldwing, and you can see I already have this quick disconnect from, or connect. I guess it's a quick connect and a quick disconnect from... Uh, skosh and I can use this with my skosh jump starter I just basically plug into this if I ever need to jump the battery but you might have a portable jump starter that does not have a quick connect disconnect and in fact I heard a rumor that even skosh is no longer making it even though I have heard from some of my uh, viewers and my followers online that Skosh does still sell the power up 700 with the connect quick connect so who knows so here's the problem this is what you probably have or some of these little alligator clips and it's very difficult to get up in here on the gold wing because you've got this plastic in the way so it's hard to get a good grip on it so what max attraction came up with was a a longer bolt for that positive terminal and we're going to replace the bolt that comes with the gold wing with this one that max has and hopefully that will uh solve that issue now i don't need it because i have this quick connect but i want to show it to you just because i think it's a pretty cool product now i'm going to go ahead and remove the negative cable because i always think it's a good practice to remove the negative or the ground first so i'm going to do that so that it's not hooked up and i'm going to say and you can see how short these bolts are the, the threads are, are very short so in theory 
that's really how long these threads should be that are going to go into uh, the and I think they ship them almost the right size. I'm going to back it out just a little bit so that it's pretty close to the same size as what comes from Honda or from UASA, I guess. And your battery may be different, so you might need to adjust these threads a little bit. Okay, we're going to need a wrench so that we can tighten this uh, bolt or this nut up against the terminal. So let me go grab a wrench to fit. Well, as it turns out, it only requires a 10 millimeter wrench. So that makes it kind of handy. So let's take this out. Now, if you're careful, there is a little nut on the back of this battery terminal and it is loose. And if you bring this straight out, you might get lucky and hit that nut again because if it gets starts moving around on you, it can be a lot of fun trying to get that back in. So let's just see if I get lucky. I'm going to put this here. I'm just going to back it out a little bit, see if we need a little more thread just to give us some room to work here. See if we can get lucky and hit that, hit those threads back there the first time. You can kind of do this by hand, I hope. See if I get all the, see if I caught those threads. I did. Okay, now, now you can see you've got this extended bolt here. Then now, if you ever do need to jump start your motorcycle, it's very easy to get these alligator, that alligator clip right there on that, and then you're, you're good to go. So it's a simple solution. Max loves coming up with these little simple fixes for things that uh, most of us would never think of. And that's one of them. So let me get my wrench up here and I'm going to tighten this really well so that it is tightened up against that I'm not seeing my main bolt move, so I think it's okay. Yeah, we're good. That's good to go. And now I'll reinstall my ground and uh, we're done. You could also extend the ground, but this bolt that Max has, I think, is going to be a little too long. If you use this same bolt over here, uh, it'll probably hit the side cover. So you might have to trim down this bolt. Uh, leave that nut in place, maybe use a hacksaw to cut off some of the bolt and still give yourself maybe an extra half an inch. You could do that. I heard somebody did that. They, they put this bolt over here as well. Uh, that's just up to you, but you would need to trim off some of those threads so that it doesn't hit your side case when you go to put it back on. So now I'm going to try to remove the remnants of this footrest grip. I guess you call it this center stand grip pad uh, that I had installed years ago from Max. And this is another one. I ordered a new one because this one's kind of wearing away. But I've been, probably been on there four years, three or four years. <clears throat> I'm going to try to use a scraper. I'm going to see if I can do this without using any heat. Yeah, it looks like it's going to come off. Probably going to tear up my razor blade, but that's okay. Those are cheap. Yeah, it comes off. Just kind of flakes off. It's probably kind of half rotted now. So these things are good for two or three years, and then you have to replace them, and they're real cheap. Max sells them cheap. It's basically uh, the same material that they would use, like a non-slip surface uh, material for stairs, for steps. 
you could buy this material and cut your own out, but Max already has them pre-cut, so and they're cheap, so why not just get one from him? Support another, you know, American business. I doubt that he's making enough on it to make a difference. I don't think he's building that beautiful new home because I'm buying this replacement pad from him. Now, getting this adhesive off, that might be another interesting story. I've got some isopropyl alcohol here, but that usually doesn't quite cut it. I'm going to try some WD-40. Usually WD-40 does a pretty good job of melting away old adhesive. I like it better than Goo Gone, actually. And then once, of course, after that, you can always get rid of the WD-40. I just have a little can I use here. Just gonna let it soak a little bit. There's Cruise Man's tip of the day. If you need to get rid of old adhesive, Try WD-40. It really does a good job of... It just... It's like it kind of melts away that adhesive. Yeah, it feels like it's almost all gone now. Okay. Now I'm going to go back with my alcohol and we'll get rid of the WD-40 residue so that uh, we'll have a good clean surface for our new... Yeah, that feels pretty good. I hit it with alcohol one more time. Make sure we don't have any of that remaining lubricant from WD-40 on there. Okay, now I think we're ready to apply our new... If I can get the backing off here. Am I even getting close? I think I am. That looks pretty good right there. Now I'm going to let this dry or cure for probably 24 hours before I use it. I have the bike on the center stand anyway. It'll probably be on overnight, so that should be good. And this just keeps your shoes or boots, the sole of your shoe or your boot from slipping when you go to put down your center stand. It gives it something, some, some good grip. I don't know why Honda doesn't, you know, serrate this uh, little foot pad, pad uh, you know, but they don't. So... Now, even though I don't have the bike on a lift right now, if you were going to remove your front wheel, you'd want to keep that front wheel stationary. And Honda has a way to do that. They've got this little uh, slot or hole up in the front fork mechanism, and you can slip something down. I usually use a bolt, but Max has machined this pin to the perfect size that when you slip it down into that opening, it will hold that front wheel perfectly steady. And that makes it very, very easy to remove your front wheel or replace the front wheel. You just want to make sure you remove that pin before you ride off on the motorcycle, obviously. But it's a, a great little product, very inexpensive. I highly recommend if you ever plan on removing your front wheel, use this little product from Max. Okay, so my last little project from uh, Traction is going to be this little, I know this sounds, looks kind of corny, but it's a little sticker that goes on your horn button, and supposedly it's glow in the dark, because the horn button is one of the few buttons on the hand controls that are not lit, they're not backlit. So I am going to apply this sticker. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my alcohol first to clean off that button. Same alcohol I used before, just isopropyl alcohol. 
free of any, hopefully free of any oil and grease. Just gonna clean this off. And uh, when I order these, I got four of them. I guess they come four to an order. They must not last very long or something. I'm not sure. But uh, that's how they came. Also used just a little bit of alcohol on my fingers. I'm just going to kind of line it up to the top there as best I can. And we'll see if that actually works. I know it's a silly little product. I'm going to press the horn button here just to press that adhesive down. Another one of Max's simple little solutions. So now we should have... I wonder if I could turn the lights off and if we'd be able to see it in the dark. Okay, I'm going to close the garage door. And it gets pretty dark in here with that door closed. So we'll see if we can see it. My golly, it does look like it glows in the dark. Now, I still have some light on. I'm going to hit this with some light, see if it captures a little light. Does it get brighter? It sure does. Okay. Now, all my lights are off in the garage. Look at that. It sure does show up. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that crazy? So it, it absorbs light, kind of like the old watch faces used to do. And it does glow in the dark. Max did it. So that's actually kind of cool. Thanks for watching this video. And if you liked this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can check out all these products on Max's website, traction.com. I'll put a link in the description down below. And I'll see you on the next Cruise Man's Garage.